if you want an easy way to extend your Wi-Fi network in your home or your office, especially if you want to have something that's sleek and compact and is designed to go on the ceiling mount, or it can go on the wall, or of course you could set it on a desk, but that's really not what this form factor is designed around. It's designed around being um, easy to mount up on a ceiling is its main purpose and have 360 de degree coverage out there. So this is a wireless access point. So this one is from UV and I've actually used that brand before. It is made in China and it is a more budget brand out there. But I've used it actually for a point to point bridge mode to send Wi-Fi signal from um, to get it all the way from the house uh, back to one of my back barns out there and is able to travel hundreds of feet and do a point to point connection and it works well. I've had it for over a year, I think probably a year and a half now and it just works. I never deal with it. So I have had some success with this brand and this guy does come in at the low end of a cost for this uh, form factor of a ceiling mount access point that has some configurations. So for those that haven't watched my channel, I do a lot of like home internet stuff, T-Mobile, Verizon home internet, and you have to really place those devices at the place where you get the best cellular signal. And that might not be the best for getting Wi-Fi to all the places of your house. So that's where something like this will come into play where you can uh, put your main modem or gateway wherever it needs to be to get the uh, best signal. And then you can run ethernet to this guy and get the Wi-Fi to where you need it to be. And before I get too far, I must say this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. Do give me the uh, thumbs up button if you like this content, and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not yet. So for this, it comes in the box with um, just a few pieces. It's obviously the main unit itself. This is a uh, power over Ethernet adapter or injector. And what this does is plugs into the wall, and this will allow you to send power um, to this device. So this takes 48 volt power over the Ethernet. That's the only cable you have to have on it. They give you a short Ethernet cable and then they give you a couple of the mounting screws in there and a user manual. If we look on the back side here, this is where you can see it has two Ethernet ports. One of them is the power over Ethernet port and the other one is a extra LAN port. So if you wanted to connect something to this through Ethernet and not just Wi-Fi, you do have one port to do that. And it does have a 12 volt DC input. They do not give you that adapter, but if you don't have a power over Ethernet setup, you can power this with 12 volt DC. And then there's a reset button. And then for the mounting, this plate here slides off and it just has these little grooves that go in there. Uh, so this is what you mount to either the ceiling or the wall, or like I said, you could just place it on a table if you wanted to. And then this guy uh, fits in here. You line up those slots, and then you slide it on, and it snaps into place. So it's a low-profile device. It does have an LED on the front to uh, give you indication that one is powered on. It's got um, you know the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz signal. All right, and this device is 802.11ax, which is Wi-Fi 6 protocol. And so that gives you both the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi that um, is fairly common in today's world. And then it supports up to 3,000 megabits per second of speed. So about 2,400 megabits per second of that is capable on the 5 gigahertz side. And about uh, 600 is um, capable on the 2.4 gigahertz network. So that's total combined. So for most users, it should have enough speed, especially to keep up with your ISP. For the user manual here, it um, does have pictures and actually it does have color, which is um, nice or a little bit surprising. The translation to English is pretty poor in some of the places. Um, and the setup is a little bit more difficult than I would like it to be. You do have to configure your IP address on your computer or your device manually first to connect to it. So let me show you how you do that. And then I want to test this and see just how good is it. Can it keep up with my standard I have ASUS routers right now. I want to see what the coverage compares and then the speed compares of using this versus one of those other devices. And then of course the beauty of this one is that I can have it right out here. I'm in my basement. I can easily put it on this drop ceiling um, very quickly. And if it can help versus having my ASUS one, which is tucked in a closet, you know, behind a couple walls, um, that might make a big difference. So let's hop into the, um, the setup and see how it does and then start the testing. Alright, so I plugged in the device to the power over Ethernet injector 
I got it to start up and it showed me a blue light which means that both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is on and now I'm going into my computer here I have um, on the other side of that power Ethernet ejector is my second cable so this is the one cable that goes to here and then I have another cable that goes from the uh, wall outlet to the computer by Ethernet you can also do this by Wi-Fi but Ethernet in just the more robust way so I'm in Windows 11 I went in here to the settings for network and internet and then I go in here to Ethernet because that's what I'm on and then this IP assignment I have to manually assign it so I have to take it off the DHCP change it to manual we're going to do IPv4 and then it tells us here what um, address we need to have so we need to have a 192.168.188. something so you can make it 2 or all the way up to 255 so we'll do the subnet mask like they ask and then let's see if they tell us to do a gateway they don't specify it but I can see but I know what the gateway should be and that is going to be the dot one which is that one and then I'm just going to use a DNS that I know works and we should be good here so hopefully that will identify and connect okay so it is um, now connected okay so let's now type in that gateway address to the um, web browser and now that allows me to log into here so let's see what the default password is our right, so default password is admin so we'll just log in all right there we go so now we are connected to it and they do point out there's two different uh, AP modes. One's a fat AP and one's a fit AP. The fit AP is really to go with their ecosystem. So if you use their um, other network devices and switches and routers and gateways, then you would use it as a fit. Otherwise, this would be a what they call fat AP mode. So I'm going to leave mine in fat AP for this uh, setup here. Okay, so in here you can change it so that it's in gateway mode, which basically turns on NAT or the you know IP um, assigning and router uh, features of this device. But for this purpose where I want it to be an access point, I don't want to do that. So that means whatever device I connect this to, if I connect it to my, let's say, T-Mobile gateway, then it will still get the IP addresses from that gateway and it will do all that routing. This is just... A means for your devices to connect to a Wi-Fi and get back to your main gateway so that's in the AP mode here it also does allow a repeater mode which is set up where you're going to have devices um, basically repeat that Wi-Fi signal to allow more devices to connect to it okay so for this setup I'm gonna leave it in this AP mode and again that has NAT turned off no firewall and all network related functions you know it does not do our own here in the Wi-Fi you can see you can change the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi you can change obviously the name um, it has a little Wi-Fi analyzer here which is kind of nice because now it's going to look at what is out there currently and you can see my different you have a, a mesh system so I have multiple uh, routers putting out the Zima land Wi-Fi you can also see a Verizon you can see the Tater Arc is turned on as well um, and so this helps you see which channel so it doesn't have a label down here on the bottom but this is basically a channel of uh, Wi-Fi that they're on for 2.4 gigahertz and so you'd want to pick a channel that's not heavily used so channel 1 for me is heavily used so you'd want to pick um, something that is uh, separate or less um, used up uh, that helps with uh, keeping interference down so again you can do the same thing for the 5 gigahertz now this is looking at the 5 gigahertz signal that I have out there you can see I have a lot around the 149 um, so 64 to 153 range so you want to pick something in a different range ideally so this is where you can also change obviously the password and uh, you might have an issue here looking at the WPA you know um, some older devices only support WPA and not WPA2. Looks like they actually combine both of them together, which 
is actually not ideal. You really want WPA to be able to pull it out separately. Otherwise, um, this stuff is fairly standard that you would get with most other um, Wi-Fi devices. So you can set it up um, how you want. For the advanced side, um, here we can change our region. We're definitely USA. Um, user isolation. So this is actually an important thing to know. Um, on and off, this would mean that the users are isolated, um, especially between different bands typically. So 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, sometimes they're, um, they're separated. So I don't want to have that on. All right, so this stands for Mac Access Control List. So you can have a control list of devices that you want to connect or not connect. This might actually be really helpful if you have this in a place to help get Wi-Fi to a certain area, but you don't want all your devices to connect to it. You might only want a handful of devices that are, say, in the corner of your house to connect to this guy. You can actually put them on here as a white list, meaning only those devices actually connect to it. All right, so for this one, um, under network for LAN, you know, I think we can leave it here as far as getting the IP from the AC. I might have to change it to gateway. I'll have to see how it um, how it thinks about my, uh, so I'll hook this up to my Verizon home internet. All right, so it does give you the option to back up and restore your configurations, which is nice. This is actually a nice feature. This has a time to reboot. Uh, so you can have it uh, restart um, every day or every few days there, uh, which is certainly handy. All right, so now for the testing stuff. This is always the most fun because I don't know what I'm going to experience until I go out and test it. Now, my setup, I have my uh, ISP modem. It's actually a 5G gateway for cellular up on the third floor in a loft. And then I have a Ethernet cable going from there straight down here to the basement. And then in a closet here is my main router for my mesh system. And that is where that Ethernet cable goes into. I tested my computer, my phone, my tablet, connected directly to that router and what my connection was. Um, and it's all fairly uh, consistent. Actually, my um, computer seems to be a little bit on the slower side for whatever reason. But for my devices here, I get 236 megabits per second download and about 20 megabits per second upload on my phone and then what I did was I took the ethernet cable out of that main router and I connected it through the PoE um, plug and then over here to this UV so now this UV access point is effectively directly connected via ethernet um, to my 5G gateway from Verizon and when I tested that on my phone, literally minutes apart, I would get 239 megabits per second download and 19.2 uploads. So almost identical speeds connected to this guy versus connected to my Asus system, which is a great thing. But that's here with me very close proximity. I'm within 10 feet of both devices. So then I wanted to go out there and test and see how well this signal broadcasts. And for this testing, I was on the 5 gigahertz which is really the you know the the best one to be on for speed but 2.4 does travel further but even with that 5 gigahertz if i went three floors up so this is basement went to the first floor the second floor and then went to the third floor loft and i was still able to get signal from this guy but it is fairly um straight up you know i don't have to go off to the side too much to do that so when I tested up there on that third floor, I was getting about 54 megabits per second down and 2.3 megabits per second upload. So certainly a big uh, reduction. But if I go anywhere on uh, the basement, I was definitely over 100 megabits per second. So I mean, it's still half the speed of being really close to it, but you know, I'm probably about 30 feet away with walls in between it. Um, so I would say very easily you can cover this uh, single floor 2,500 square feet with that one device. When I went up to the uh, main floor of the house, so one floor up from where I'm at, I got as low as 62 megabits, megabits per second download, and it was still like, you know, 18 for upload. So, you know, I certainly started to, to see a bigger change once I got up uh, one floor above, but 
this device is really designed around um, having a few of these in your house wherever you need to get the best uh, system and so from that standpoint this does work and I think with the coupons out there it's like uh, just under a hundred dollars a piece so what you're really paying for there is this form factor and you don't have you know the thing with all the antennas out there that a lot of the, including my Asus ones have so it is a sleeker profile that fits in there and easy to go on a roof I mean our ceiling the downside I will say is you know there are competitors out there uh, TP-Link is, is a common one that um, I've used some of their stuff as well in the past and they have very similar devices now they are a little bit more money but it's probably maybe 20 or 30 bucks uh, more and it's a little more well-known name the interface for connecting to this is a little bit you know lacking uh, as far as some of the features but um, if you're trying to save the 20 bucks or something uh, per each one then from my testing this does work and you know from my testing of their other building to building you know point to point wireless bridge that one has continued to work for me and I haven't had any problems with it so once you get it set up this one has that little bit of a pain to set up uh, with the manually assigning your uh, IP address on your device after that it was a piece of cake it literally was just plug and play and it did work so so certainly it works and it does seem to be probably the cheapest one I could find out there but you can spend a little bit more money and get a different one and it really probably depends on your ecosystem what you're using for your setup and these things are really designed to work best within a specific ecosystem so if you're going to go for multiples of these then it's probably better to stay within one brand um, so that you have consistency across it.